Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home. We're in our Tara kitchen today here with Sherry Weavers from Three Little Birds Home Solutions. So thank you so much for joining us here thank today. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is all about uh, looking at natural cleaning and natural cleaning products, right? So let's go back a little bit to how this all kind of came to be for you. Okay, well for me, basically 2011, I was a stay-at-home mom and I was looking to go back to work. Mm -hmm. I was just about to go back into retail and customer service, which all my background is, mm -hmm. and I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it came as a bit of a surprise sure. and uh, somebody had said to me, well, maybe you're not meant to do that. Maybe this is, you know, a little kick in the pants right. to consider something else. It's funny how the, the stars can exactly. do that, right? <laughs> so then I started thinking and this really appealed to me, the, cre the cleaning business. Mm -hmm. Basically, I love the idea of there always being better ways to do things. Yes. And I like having the client relationships. I also really like having the, the you know, the, the evenings and weekends free for my family. Yes. So basically, having just come from breast cancer diagnosis. It mm -hmm. didn't make sense to get into all the conventional products that right, are out all there. all the toxic stuff that's out there that people are literally spraying right in front of their face and breathing in. Exactly, and, oh. exactly. And I'm not one of those, you know, people who are all into all the natural stuff, but yeah. I figure, you know what, this is something that's really easy. You can mm -hmm. get the same results, mm -hmm. saves you money. Now, it's funny how it, can, it goes back to back in the day when you know they, they didn't have access to all those layers of chemicals and toxic stuff, and they were just just the basics of you know vinegar and water and lemon juice and all those different things that you can use to clean. Yeah, absolutely. I think what really happened is a lot of people don't realize how to use the natural products. That's the thing. I think people are stumped because they're not sure if it's actually going to clean properly. It may visually look okay, but they're not sure if they're actually removing um, you know bacteria and things exactly, like that. From exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you you are not only um, have the product but also you obviously go into people's homes and you clean with these natural products yes, so you are do. a cleaning service yes, as well. Yes we are. Very what good. we find honestly a lot of our clients don't even they're not as concerned with the natural products they want the results. Uh -huh. So there you That's can the go. Thing. <laughs> so you know what we can tell you they work. They want to walk into their door the after the end of the day they've known that you've been in their home and it looks sparkly and shiny and smells Exactly clean and, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things I found when I I used to try the cleaning products when I was a stay-at-home mom mm -hmm. and I tried using natural and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I want my lemony fresh I yeah. want that scent. Mm -hmm. Clean doesn't have a smell. That's hard mm -hmm. for a lot of people to adjust right. to. Yeah. So what yeah. we we do is it's a, uh, we use a lot of essential oils. Yes. Okay. Basically gives you the scent you're looking for mm -hmm. as well and I mean some of them are calming, some mm -hmm. of them are energizing so mm -hmm. you can use what it's going to suit your family. Mm -hmm. Additionally, there's a lot of antibacterial properties to your essential oils. There you go. So and again, that's where people aren't sure what to do. So exactly, you're going to kind of help us yep. uh, take through some of these steps today and uh, and give us some ideas of exactly. some of your secrets, but not all of your secrets. <laughs> right. And what you'll find is most of these products are, well, pretty much all these products are just items that you're going to be able to find in your grocery store. Okay. All right. So where should we start? Okay. First one we're going to try is. We'll start with our all-purpose. Mm -hmm. This here, basically what we do is we would get your spray bottle. This mm -hmm. is a great size. These are from the dollar store. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to do, you always want to label it. I like labeling the side and the top. Smart. Yes. <laughs> Because you know what, you will get your husband cleaning. I was just going to say, or you just get that random person who goes under your sink and starts spraying things. You're like, no, wrong one. That's just not exactly. good. Exactly. Right. Well, you know what else is important is kids. This will be safe. Your kids can help. So when yes. the kids spill something, yes. you know what, go grab the, uh, in my case, I always say go grab the green uh -huh. and clean, and you can clean good. that up. Okay. And again, to mark them, a lot of times what I like to use, and we use them in our cleaning, in our cleaning business, mm -hmm. Electrical tape. Mm -hmm. It sounds silly, but we put a ring around. Red is for bathroom cleaners. Green is, it would be for the rest of your house. Okay. We use blue in our case for a floor cleaner. And the kids, it's very easy again. I'll just mm -hmm. say, Jackson, you know, my little guy, go yeah. grab your blue cleaner yeah. and, you know, oh, go clean up awesome. that milk you spilled. That's awesome. And like, again, even if it's not done well, yeah. you know what? But you're teaching them life skills as well and, and yeah, that's absolutely. Okay, clean up after yourself. You know what? <laughs> kids have fun doing it. it, it they it, do. It, well, they like to, they like to feel, you know, that they're, they're empowered, right? Exactly. So this is completely safe for Good. them to do. Okay. So the all-purpose here, basically, it's very, very easy. We like to use distilled water. Mm -hmm. Reason being is that you know for sure you're not leaving any minerals or anything okay. like that in your. That's right, because you'd also be dealing with uh, in different areas where you clean. You're dealing with different types of water, right? Exactly. Off, soft, exactly. And I mean, you can. Water. I mean, um, I, if I was just doing this for my own home, quite often, a lot of times I would use just my tap water. Right. It's okay. fast. It's easy. Okay. So here we go. So basically, in a bottle, this this recipe here, mm -hmm. all we're going to need to do here, do, would you like to do that? Sure. I'll get you to do that. So we're going to do two cups of water. Okay. Whoops. So that's okay. You know what? And that's the thing. It's, it's safe. <laughs> it's water. It's safe. Exactly. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is 
it, we're going to actually add two bottles or two cups of water. But sure. what I'm going to do is I like to add this next. Okay. This is going to be. This is just natural dish soap. Okay. Again, you can if you know what you can make your own. You can use just your your sunlight or whatever mm -hmm. you have at home. Mm -hmm. But again. To stick with the natural, it's easy enough to right. get the natural. Yeah. Now this is how affordable this is to make, you'll see here. So this is just one teaspoon here of dish soap. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do to make sure that we get that all, can you hold that there? Yep. The, the, this one? Oh, this Perfect, one. thanks. Because sure. what we're going to do is we're going to rinse that with the next. Yeah, that way you're getting your. Exactly. Not wasting. So basically, we are adding now, the, that just helps. With that there. Okay. Good. All righty. So this basically is filling up half your bottle. So you could, of course, double the recipe if that's what you like. Mm -hmm. Shelf life on these products is not as long as conventional products. So, I mean, generally, this is going to last you a couple months. Sure. But, I mean, you're well, going to Well, generally, hopefully, you've cleaned your house enough And, again, you'll <laughs> see. So this here, this costs probably in the range of 3 $4. Sure. We used one teaspoon in there. Yeah. So there you, you go, can right? see, yeah. Okay. And then what we try to do here now is we're going to add some essential oils as well to make mm -hmm. it uh, smell fantastic as well as have antibacterial properties. Right, okay. Ones that are fantastic would be lavender and peppermint, grapefruit. They all have antibacterial properties to them. Mm -hmm. Basically, all essential oils do. Some are just that much mm -hmm. more powerful than mm -hmm. the others. So, how about you take a pick there? We okay. usually would go with about. Five drops, I'd do okay, three of grapefruit. Grapefruit? Okay, sure. so I would recommend probably three drops of the grapefruit. Okay. Ooh, oh. That's okay. How about 12? See? <laughs> and that's the thing. <laughs> and that's the thing. You don't have well, to worry so good. about it. It's going to smell fantastic. That came out and way faster than I was expecting. You're like, and then uh, there we go. <laughs> you give it a shake. Now, what you're going to want to do, the essential oils generally are going to separate. Mm -hmm. What we often do in our business and with our recipes is we will add about a tablespoon, uh, sorry, this much here, we would add about yeah. a teaspoon of the baking soda, or vodka. And everyone did wonders you, about the did vodka. You say I vodka, said vodka. <laughs> <laughs> the reason being is well. this helps keep it all mixed up. So you maybe just a slight little shake or something, and you're oh going to be gosh. good to go. You're kidding. See, so, you would have never yeah. thought. Yeah. Well, again, the reason we choose the vodka, you can do is rubbing alcohol, which yeah. is a fantastic cleaner as well. Mm -hmm. Vodka and, and rubbing alcohol on their own. Yep. Uh, what we do, we choose the vodka because of the way it's made. It's more eco friendly. Okay. So. Very cool. All right. All right, very good. Well, guess what? We're out of time already. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, you serve the area locally, right? So, the whole entire yes, region locally. Yeah. And, again, all kinds of different uh, versions of different ideas for, for making products. And that's the great thing. Um, again, it's all about uh, just sort of the balance. But, I mean, you, you have all your secrets. So, you know. <laughs> and you could, know what? I could be with you for the next half an hour. We would learn all of them. But, and what uh, we're going to do is we're going to have on our website, mm -hmm. we're going to have a link. If anybody wants to go to our website, okay. it'll be three little... Uh, threelittlebirds.ca slash Tara. Awesome. And what we're going to do is we're going to list additional recipes as Very well. Very good. Good so. answer. Thank you, Sherry. Good stuff. Okay, I really appreciate you. your help today. And now at least, well, I have a good one with lots of grapefruit <laughs> in it. That's it for now. We'll be back with okay. more. <laughs>
Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. I'm here with Boris Brat, Artistic Director of the Brat Music Festival. And nice to have you with us here today. Thank you, Leslie. And Pleasure. And our beautiful surroundings right now. And we I'm want to into talk gardens and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. what we're talking about. And that's what's so great is that you have this personal interest anyway, right? Yes, I certainly but do. But we have an interest today to talk about your educational series that has been going on since 99, right? 1999. That's right. Because we like growing young people, too. That's right. And that's, that's why what we're this doing. fits so well. And we know how great music is for children and the exposure, and it makes them better. You students. say we know, but you know we don't really know how really? important See, it I is. Really? I do just because my brother's a music well, teacher, but you're is, right, a lot of people don't know. It is something that people think of as a frill, mm -hmm. and yet it is so important to the development mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the child from standpoint of learning, yes. uh, their brain synapse development, uh, their creative development. It is vital. It's mm -hmm. a vital part of education. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it, it was scary a few years back when we looked at our you know public school system and, and we were seeing that the threat of music being removed from oh our schools. I've been living with that for the last 40 years since I've been in Hamilton. Right. So isn't that that's that scary? And so that's something you would be directly related to. And well, that's why I wanted to say that, you know, right. publicly, that it oh. really is a vital, it is. important part mm -hmm. of, of a curriculum. Mm -hmm. And our concerts are directed specifically at the curriculum mm -hmm. and at programs that they that help the teachers really to teach that curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we because have a program. Because it's a package, right, of the way that we exactly. put it together. So we have a program from K to 4, which mm -hmm. is called Isabella Tarantella. Oh. Uh, and Isabella Tarantella is is uh, from Mars mm -hmm. and she visits Earth mm -hmm. and she wants to visit all these marvelous countries but she discovers she can't communicate because she only speaks Martian and they speak Russian <laughs> and Chinese and right. all those other but she can communicate with music because music is an international language so it's all about peace and about uh, socializing the children in a sense of acceptance of different cultural backgrounds which mm. is so vital to education today I love and that then idea. we have another program that goes from grade five to grade eight mm -hmm. and that is called Beethoven and the bully mm -hmm. and bullying is a big problem in the schools today Huge. and we don't recognize that uh, that Beethoven mm -hmm. who is a, an international figure mm -hmm. of classical music um, was very much bullied as a child by his father because his father wanted him to be a Mozart. And uh, the program dramatizes using a young pianist by age 13 who, who talks about his struggles and Beethoven and his father bullying him and beating mm -hmm. him because he, he wasn't a Mozart. And, uh, and look who he became. Exactly. Right? That's right? So that's exactly the point. Right. Exactly the point. And as you know, we, as you're saying about the, the stress, is like that is a, such a huge focus for for educators right now is protecting children from bullying and and teaching them. You know whether you, it's just not cool. You have to either step in. You have to. And what to do? Mm -hmm. You know, in case do? you are bullied, don't be afraid to step up, pick up a telephone right. call, mm -hmm. and recognize that you might be bullying the next Einstein or exactly. the next Beethoven. Or, or, you know, you have to be careful mm -hmm. with people who are unusual in their talents and mm -hmm. their gifts because mm -hmm. we are all God's children in a way and, right. and we are all gifted in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for, and music is a wonderful way of discovering how that happens. Mm -hmm. So we provide uh, pre and post concert lesson plans for the teachers. That's we fantastic. provide the experience itself. The experience is very interactive. That's to say mm -hmm. the program itself, the audience gets to actually perform. Mm -hmm. See, and that's great too because again for kids it helps when they are getting right that helps them get into it and it helps them understand it better when it is interesting we have a wonderful artist holly carroll who comes mm -hmm. from nova scotia and she paints these huge paintings murals behind right. the orchestra uh, oh. at the same time oh, as the music good. is being performed so it's really? it's yeah it's interactive visually and at mohawk college we have phenomenal uh, the potential for using the college itself mm -hmm. for visuals. For uh, mm -hmm. we have these two huge screens that are on either side, so we can do close-ups of the musicians and close-ups of the actors and That's the painters nice. and so on. So it's it's really very much up to date mm -hmm. in, in terms of what is possible theatrically. Mm -hmm. It's a small theater, only 1,100 yep. seats, so it's very uh, intimate. Really, for the kids sitting right at the back, they're they're only about 70 feet from the front of the stage oh, uh, wow. at the worst. Wow! So they're right there. Uh, in the action, and of course, with with video, with uh, those large screens, they mm -hmm. can literally see the pores I was on the face. Now of that the then they're get, being able to yes. see, as you say, the instruments up close that maybe they're not as exposed to, and uh, and, and just being exposed to the symphony in general, that just gives them like. An orchestra the other, is just something. The other something. thing is our orchestra. The mm -hmm. National Academy Orchestra, orchestra. is a group mm -hmm. of young professionals, and they're very active and very animated in their performance. So it's sort of That's not good. like going to see, you know, what you might think of as an orchestra, right. which are 
sort of old guy sawing away on their instruments <laughs> and they don't look terribly happy about it. You know, right. we know a lot of orchestras like that. Sure. But this is not an orchestra like right. that. It's an orchestra really into it, that really understands. But the again, that's that helping children too, right? Because, absolutely. You know, you, you're showing, like, for example, I mean, my son, he's just a, just a little guy, but absolutely, it's completely into music and all instruments and to be exposed to it. I'm thinking right away, I want his school to go to this. The other thing I should point out is that mm -hmm. it's not just limited to schools. Parents right. can come, that grandparents can question. come. Okay. They can come and, and, and get, go to our website, okay. uh, so com. You can buy single okay. tickets. They're $6 a concert, which is like nothing. No, I know. It's They're amazing. during the day, so people you know who might be afraid to go out at night can also come. <laughs> and it's wonderful. <laughs> well, I mean, old elderly people sometimes find it difficult to go yeah, out at night and, yep. you know. Uh, but this gives them an opportunity, and busing, of course, it's, Mohawk is, is easily accessible mm -hmm. to pub both public parking and yes, also it is. busing. Yes, it is. So it, it, everything is there for them. I think that's fantastic, and I like the idea that the general public can go as well. And uh, and again, it, you know, e even at this point, it's not too late for schools to sign on board. So anybody who's watching, Absolutely. you know, to get your classroom involved. And, and again, it's it's a great field trip idea because it's so educational. And again, you're looking at you know the two groupings. So um, in November. And it's focused in and around uh, anti-bullying week, which is That's correct. really so appropriate. So the first one we were talking about this Tarantella, and uh, and and just from from uh, somebody who's in kindergarten, how does little kindergarten benefit from this? Oh well, I mean, it, it's it involves them totally. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never too er early to learn about the fact that your person sitting next to you, who's perhaps not the same skin color or yeah. perhaps not the same religion, uh, that you can communicate with them mm -hmm. through music mm -hmm. and to validate their being and validate their existence because mm -hmm. prejudice is all around us so I think a it kindergarten sure kid the best way to communicate with kids is through music again because they feel the music they, it's mm -hmm. not just telling you something mm -hmm. it is also having a sense of, of your emotions being involved so yes a kindergarten sure. kid can probably get more out of it than a grade 11 and because 12 because they absorb a lot of information <laughs> and they also don't have the prejudices yes. that a 10 and 11 or 12 year yes. old might have yeah I agree I agree so between that and the uh, the anti-bullying one and and you know to talk about you know Beethoven and the, you know the, the fact that somebody as wonderful and as talented yes has been bullied and you know what you can overcome it as well I think that's also another good message and for both people. of these programs are are scripted they are mm -hmm. they are stories so they immediately mm -hmm. involve the kids mm -hmm. it's not just a concert and now we're going to play this piece and you play it for five minutes mm -hmm. and then we're going to play the next piece and right. this is a clarinet right. it's the, the no, antithesis it is. of that it's just it's, it's good using energy and using stories in a way to involve and grab the kids because that we're, we're all interested in mm -hmm. stories look at the sitcoms on television right. and uh, if, if it has a story behind it you're immediately awesome. captured by the story mm -hmm. I agree well thank you so much Boris Bratt we appreciate you coming on the show and again of course you can go onto the website that you mentioned earlier um, and uh, and find out more information and go even just with your family or make sure your school gets yes, there. yes or give us a telephone kids. call if sure. you're in this area it's 525 song 905-525-7664 we'll be happy to hear from you Thank, Thank you, you Leslie. All right, more tarot home after this. Tara, where color lives. Heritage Perennials. Look for us in the blue pots. Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with Chef Ian and uh, we're making a lovely uh, fall dish this morning involving a little chicken and uh, really kind of a nice uh, combination of, again, some local and some kind of the vegetables that you should kind of see this time of year. I think Brussels yeah. sprouts are good all year round, but obviously having some uh, butternut squash in there and apple is yeah. very seasonal. I feel like we're returning to the classics. Yes. Again, November days, they're starting to be rainy and the gray mm -hmm. clouds are sticking around a little longer. Mm -hmm. It's time for comfort food once again. Yep. Um, what I'd like to do is start by um, 
putting up butter, olive oil, I've got some garlic and some rosemary. I'm gonna coat the chicken okay. and that'll go into the oven. And before I do that, I'm gonna put together a wonderful uh, Brussels sprout, some uh, butternut squash, apple bacon succotash oh, wow. as a side. Sounds really great. some hearty flavors. So without further ado, um, I have some melted butter mm -hmm. just brought down. I'm gonna put this into my bowl. This is going to make the house smell very good in this combination, isn't it? <laughs> People are not going to want to leave your You have your neighbors floating around. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil and some rosemary. I've just finely chopped it. Okay. Okay. And love garlic. Great <laughs> smells. Probably yes. about two cloves of garlic. And okay. without further ado, mm. take our bird. So you've already tied them off, made them sure all yeah, those little just legs trust. and wings are in there. <laughs> a really good point. Um, when I put it back into the roasting pan, when it's ready to go into the oven, I'll always make sure that its wings are just tucked underneath its body. Um, if the wings are sort of left out, they tend to burn and right, singe. Right, right, right. So again, just to make sure everything's nice and tucked up underneath. Okay. So like I said, just making sure that it's we give covered. it a massage and it's mm -hmm. coated. And I'm just going to put it on my pan right now to rest and it'll eventually go to the oven. Okay. Just going to take my cloth mm. here, clean up. It's good. It's a good idea. So what I'm going to work on now is our butternut squash and bacon and apple succotash. Okay. So, so you have some, uh, that's peppered bacon. Yep. It's a peppered cured bacon mm -hmm. uh, okay. found at my local supermarket. Mm -hmm. We're going to heat that up and start to render the fats. Um, and ultimately, we'll just add the ingredients. The thing that I would note is is the apple. Mm -hmm. I would add that to the very end. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a Granny Smith apple, it keeps its shape it, really well. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. some, it's soft still, and uh, okay. most likely at the end, I'll add it in. So you still have that little bit of a crunch. Okay. Okay. So you can sort of yeah. feel the different flavors. Okay. So yeah. So like I said, we're just rendering some bacon now. Mm -hmm. Now, are you using butternut squash? Could you use a different type of squash, or is this sort of your your choice? I mean, this is obviously one of the most common squashes that people buy, I think. But most definitely. And it holds its shape as well. The original uh, recipe that came across my pages uh, was sweet potato or acorn oh, squash. Um, it's just like I said, what I found yeah. in my local Which supermarket. I really okay. like the idea and the color. Okay. I mm -hmm. think is amazing. It mm -hmm. really sort of embraces autumn and gives mm. that feel. So you could actually do butternut squash and sweet potato. <laughs> I think that would be okay. awesome. <laughs> you certainly could. I'm just like, oh, sweet potato. Okay, that's actually really good, okay. We're just starting to render the bacon. Mm -hmm. All the fats are starting to bleed out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start to soften up my squash. We'll have some nice smells soon. This is when we're starting to move away from um, having our summer salads and uh, because we're wearing like barely anything in the summer to hey we're gonna wear sweaters now so let's uh, bulk up. Sweaters <laughs> and bits. The beginning of the bulk up for winter. <laughs> bacon, a pan full of bacon. A pan full of bacon. Oh some boy. Good squash. <laughs> this is why we cannot help ourselves here in Canada. We just we just gravitate towards comfort food in this time of year. Um, I have it on a relatively high heat. What I want to do is I want to bring the sugars out in the squash okay. to start to caramelize. And like I said, towards the end, we're going to finish it off in the oven with our bird as well. Okay, all right. So as this is going on, I'm going to start to add some of my Brussels sprouts. I'm bringing it from a pot right here where it's blanched. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to start to cook it all a little bit the way through. Okay, so blanched meaning how long did you cook those? It's a flash boil. Okay. That's a really good question. Um, I brought a, boil, a pot of water up to a boil. Mm -hmm. I threw the Brussels sprouts in, wait a few seconds, and then immediately pulled off. Like okay. I just said, I wanted to start the cooking process with it, mm -hmm. and it really brings out the color of the Brussels sprouts as well. You can see it's a really nice, vibrant yes, green. Yes, it is. And you've cut them in half, so that will help kind of cook them a little quicker too, right? Again, great okay. point. Mm -hmm. um, it cuts the cooking time down in half. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, this is good. Not to mention, it looks visually appealing. It I does. like the look of it. And it's less commitment for people who aren't sure they like Brussels sprouts. People have a, a bit of an opposition. Oh, I like that. Now, do you, you're a Brussels sprout? No, I love them, but I, right. a lot of people are kind of like, oh, I don't know. They have a hard time with them. You can still be So friends. if you have a half, then you can kind of sneak more of the other <laughs> stuff. And I had a half of Brussels sprouts. That's it entirely. That looks great. It's really great colors, and like I said, towards the end, we're just going to add Granny Smith, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's Granny Smith, Royal Gala. Mm -hmm. You've got so much to choose from this time of year. And peeled, so you're not leaving the skins on these. Yes, right? most definitely. Okay. Um, peeled it, uh, quartered it, and uh, into the pan. Okay. Mm, great that dish. That looks good. That's awesome. That's a great idea. 
And that's the great thing about that is you could really experiment with different, uh, again, using the bacon as your base because you, you have to. You need to, something in fat, absolutely. <laughs> you gotta For have sure. fat. And then, again, using, you could use maybe pear. Pear, right, possibly. Cranberries, if you wanted to go that way. Um, I have a wonderful recipe when it's Brussels sprouts, uh, cranberries, and Cipollini onions. Um, Ooh, like a, you know, the caramelization good. of the Cipollini onions. You've got that sweet tart with the cranberry. Oh. Wonderful flavors. Just finish it off with a little bit of rosemary. That's this good. is just a, a, a bit of inspiration. You can mm -hmm. really take a recipe yes. any direction that you like. Well, that's great about it. Again, once you have sort of a base, a foundation, like a recipe like this, as you say, it's basically about what you have in your fridge and you can sort of yeah. experiment. Well but, said. But I like well the said. apple. I like having that apple in there. That just changes yeah. things up a little bit. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so basically from here, at this point, or is it almost ready to go? At this point, I'm starting to see some of the caramelization on mm -hmm. the squash. My bacon has started to render out completely. We're starting to get some nice colors. Mm -hmm. um, my chicken is would be already into the oven, okay. and I would say probably within the last 20 minutes of cooking the chicken, I would put in our succotas just to finish off, just to finish the cooking process. Okay. Okay. So everything's nice As and timed. As a separate pan, though, you're not adding it As into. As a separate pan. Okay, you're not adding it into well where the said. chicken's cooking. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what we'll do is that we'll kind of get this process going as if it's all happening in our own kitchen and uh, we'll take a quick break we'll come back and we'll plate it out and make it look so pretty perfect for, uh, for fall that's it for now we'll right back. thanks where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back, and I'm here with Chef Ian, and you've officially already cut up our lovely roasted chicken from the oven. How long, uh, again, did we have the chicken in there? The most important thing is that it reaches a safe internal temperature of 165. Okay, so, so really you don't look at timing as much as... I take a look at the weight, it. and then I take a look at just how long it's going to take. Right. Uh, probe thermometer, mm -hmm. 165 okay. is our magic number that we reach. Okay. It doesn't need any resting from that. So, okay. um, like I said, um, our little marinade on top of that with some garlic, some olive oil, some butter, uh, a little bit of rosemary. Mm. Um, the butter really browns the skin of the chicken. It looks really, really great. And I also have put together a wonderful uh, succotash, mm. which is some, <clears throat> excuse me, butternut squash. I've got some great Brussels sprouts, some bacon, and some Granny Smith apple. And we were commenting on how nice it looks because it looks all caramelized and, and toasty. And yeah, it just the, looks really good. It really has really come together. The, the bacon renders the fat out beautifully. It mm -hmm. coats everything. It releases the sugars from the squash. It really is a great appetizing. It's a, it's a wonderful fall meal. Mm -hmm. And easy and straightforward because we didn't have to add a lot of herbs or anything to it because again, a lot of that flavor and the herbs are in the chicken, right? Yeah. So that's it's just a really straightforward dish, and, and right. we talked about the uh, the variables with that one. So, okay, yep. so let's put this all together. Relatively straightforward. It's just two pots. Mm -hmm. Again, I'll put together a little chicken for you on a plate. Mm -hmm. Remind, of course, everybody while you're doing this that uh, you can find this recipe on our website at terragreenhouses.com. So this is perfect again for this time of year when we want that cozy, cozy yeah. dish using again a lot of. Uh, the root vegetables are really just great to have. It's true. But and we talked about the fish. different variations of the succotash, mm -hmm. um, cranberries, yes. whatever you have in the freezer or the mm -hmm. fridge, um, onions, rosemary, garlic, um, virtually endless. Just, yeah, just experiment and it's have fun. Great. That's great. I love that. That's a great dish. Can't wait to try it. I know we all can't wait to try it. So have yourself a good weekend. Hopefully you can try this one. We'll see you next time. Thanks.